Oh, hi. I was just looking at the time on, on my um, cell phone. Time can get quite complicated, can't it? I mean, there's so many different ways of writing time nowadays, and uh, uh, we use time all the time. In fact, time uh, can come into a number of sections in your mathematical literacy. It comes into your finance, it comes into your map work, got to know time. So this whole section on time in your exams is not going to be a section that says now we're testing time. No, it won't. It'll fall under your different uh, topics in mathematical literacy. Right. So let's have a look at this whole concept of time a little more. Okay. If I were to say to you, it's 8 o'clock, what does that actually mean? Because 8 o'clock can be written in three different ways. It can be written as 3, 8 a.m., 8 p.m., and oh my goodness, it can be written like this. 20 hundred hours, okay? So those are three ways of expressing eight o'clock. So when somebody says to me, what time should we meet tomorrow? And I say eight o'clock. I could mean eight o'clock tomorrow night. And they rock up at eight o'clock in the morning while I'm still trying to sleep, okay? That would be my fault because I haven't specified what I actually mean by that eight o'clock. What I should have said was either 8 p.m. or 20 hundred hours. So, we get two types of clocks that we can write. We get a 12 hour clock time and a 24 hour clock time. A 12 hour clock, we would always add a.m. or p.m. But a 24 hour clock, we wouldn't have to say a.m. or p.m. And I'll show you why. So, here we go. We're going to convert the following into a 24-hour format. So, Jane goes to bed at 9.56 p.m. Now, p.m. is in the night, okay? It's, we've already gone 9 hours 56 minutes past midday. But at the start of the day at midnight, we had 12 hours before 12 o'clock that afternoon. So we're going to add 12 hours to that. And when we add 12 hours to that, we land up with 21.56. So 24 hour clock means we add 20, or oh, add another 12 hours to the time that's been given to us. So 9.56 plus 12, it can be written as 21.56. The local shop opens at 8.30 a.m. 8.30, it's a.m. So we haven't had the first 12 hours of the day from midnight to 12 o'clock in the afternoon. We've just got 8.30. So we're not going to add the 12 uh, hours. So 8.30 a.m. on a 24-hour clock is 8.30. Cool. Archie's cricket practice ends at 4.05 p.m. So we have 4.05 p.m. means 4 hours and 5 minutes after midday. But before midday, we had 12 hours. From midnight that night, all the way to 12 o'clock at afternoon, there was 12 hours. So we're going to add 12 hours. And what do we get? 16.05. So 4.05 p.m. can be written as 16.05 in 24-hour format. That's deep. Okay. Right, let's have a look. Here now. Now we're giving you time in 24 hour format and we want to change it to 12 hour format. Okay. Because sometimes one can get confused, right? David's school day, uh, sorry, David's school day ends at 1445. Now a lot of people read that as 445 in the afternoon. And actually it's not. So if you look at it, we got 1445. Let's just get a nice uh, time here. 14.45. And we're going to subtract 
12 hours. Okay, remember when we went from 12 hour to 24 hour, we added 12. Now we're gonna subtract 12 because we're going from 24 hour to a 12 hour. When we subtract that, we get 245. Because we subtracted that, we knew there was 12 hours in the morning already gone. So we're dealing in the afternoon. So it's 2.45 p.m. Let's have a look at here. Right, 10.25. So 10.25, we can't subtract 12. If I subtract 12, yeah, I'm going to land up with minus time. Guys, then I'm living in the like back future kind of thing. I don't even know how to say that. But I can't have a minus time. So I can't subtract 12 from this. So 10.25 on a 24-hour clock is the same thing as 10.25 on a 12-hour, but we know it's morning because we didn't have to subtract 12 hours. So 10.25 on a 24-hour clock is the same thing as saying 10.25 a.m. on a 12-hour. Now, the Doobie family eats dinner at 19.35. Can I subtract 12 hours? Of course I can subtract 12 hours. When I subtract 12 hours, I'm going to land up with 7.35. So the time is 7.35 and it's going to be p.m. Why p.m.? Because we subtracted 12 hours, so we've already taken away the morning. We know we're dealing in the afternoon. Sure. Deep stuff. Okay. Now, Time conversions. Guys, we have to know this. All right. You should all know this for your exam. Let's have a look. We know that one minute comprises of 60 seconds. You've got to know that. You've got to know that 60 minutes is the same as one hour. And how many hours are there in a day? There are 24 hours in one day. How many days in a week? There are seven days in a week. There are approximately 52 weeks in a year, which is the same as 365 days, which is the same as 12 months, which is one year. Guys, you've got to know this. You can't do time calculations unless you know how to do this. Okay? Unless you know these facts. But you know them, because you've known this since you were in primary school, so it's nothing new. Let's see how we apply all these times to calculations. It takes John 140 seconds to boil water in a kettle. How many minutes and seconds does the water take to boil? Okay, so this is interesting. I've got 140 seconds. And I want to see how many minutes. Now, how many seconds are there in a minute? There are 60. So let's take away 60 here. Okay. 140 minus 60. And again, let's not think and hurt our brain. Let's use our calculator. I'm going to say 140 seconds minus 60 seconds. And that leaves me with 80 seconds. I'm going to take away another 60 seconds. Because there's 60 seconds in a minute, and I'm left with 20 seconds. Now, that 60 seconds is one minute. This 60 seconds is one minute. And 20 seconds is just 20 seconds. Now, I've got here then two minutes and 20 seconds. How exciting is that stuff? Okay. I'm going to show you an easier way. Way to do it on your calculator. Now your calculator has a special button and I like to call it the time button. It's not really called that. I just call it that because I use it for time. Let's have a look at our calculator. If we look at our calculator, you will see that I have this button over here. It's a zero and then it looks like a comma, a comma, a comma. Let's bring it up again. Can you find it that on your calculator? It's next to or above the ENG button. 
and the ng button is above the 8. So everyone, locate the 8. Can you see the 8? Above the 8 is ENG, and then above that, there's a time button. Okay. Now, the important thing about using this time button is to remember this, that I've got to tell my calculator how many hours, how many minutes, and how many seconds I'm actually dealing with. Okay. So if I want to type in 30 minutes, I've got to say, hey, calculator, there are no hours. There are 30 minutes. And there are no seconds okay don't just type in 30 because your calculator is going to look at this and say Geez, what's that 30 mean so let's have a look at this I want to convert 140 seconds let's see how we can do that on our calculator I'm gonna say right mr. calculator I have no hours and I push my time button to show that I'm dealing in hours I have no minutes and I push the time button to show that that's minutes. Can you see the little circles there? Then I have 140 seconds and I push my time button again. So looking at that on my calculator at the moment, I see zero time button, zero time button, 140 time button. In other words, no hours, no minutes, 140 seconds. Now folk, watch the magic. I'm going to push equals. When I push equals, voila, what does that tell me? That tells me I have no hours. I got 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Look at our answer here. 2 minutes, 20 seconds. What did our calculator say? Our calculator said 2 minutes, 20 seconds. How magic is this calculator? Okay got to know how to use it. In fact, it doesn't even have to be a scientific calculator. Some little calculators also have that time button. It just makes this whole question so much easier. Let's have a look here. A movie lasts 138 minutes. How long is the movie in hours and in minutes? So I've got 138 minutes. I'm going to subtract 60 minutes. Why? Because that means there's an hour that's gone. Okay, so out comes my calculator, 138, and I'm going to subtract 60. And that leaves me with 78. So I have 78 minutes. I'm going to subtract another 60. And when I do that, I'm obviously going to be left with 18 minus 60, 18. So 18 minutes. Now that 60 minutes here represents one hour. This 60 minutes represents one hour. So my movie is two hours, 18 minutes. Should we do that with the calculator? I think we should. Let's have a look. So my calculator, I'm going to say, right, Mr. Calculator, I have no hours at all, and I push my time button. I have 138 minutes, I push my time button. I've got no seconds, push my time button. And I say, okay, Mr. Calculator, you do the magic. Push the equal sign, voila, what do we see? We see two hours, 18 minutes, just like it shows me here. So I've got a long way of doing it, and I've got a calculator way of doing it my calculator doesn't have that button then I'm going to use this method over here all right what I want to do is I want to look at uh, a calculation that I saw the other day which I find fascinating because it involves so much I read that the average man lives to the age of 70 years old Yo. Okay, that's almost as old as me. Not quite there, but nearly there. And I was thinking to myself, myself, how many seconds is that? 70 years is equal to how many seconds? Jeez, that's quite a problem, hey? So let's do that. Okay, I'm going to change the 70 years and we are going to change it all the way down until we get seconds all right so 70 years is how many days well we know there are three uh, on average 365 days in a year 
So 70 times 365. So I'm going to say 70 times 365. I'm going to ignore the leap years. I know on a leap year we have 366 days, but let's just keep it at a constant 365. And I land up now with 25,550 days. Cool. Okay. That's a lot of days to live. How many hours is that? Well, how many hours in a day? There are 24 hours. So let's now do that on our calculator. So we got 25,550 days. We multiply that by 24. And I land up with 613,200 hours. Sure. So 70 years is the same thing as 25,550 days, which is the same thing as 613,200 hours. How many minutes is that? Well, how many minutes in an hour? There are 60. So let's change that. And we're going to say times 60 equals, yeah, check that number out. Okay, that is three, six, seven, nine, three, three, six, seven, nine. And then I think it was a two, was it? Yeah, two and then zero, zero, zero. So it's 36 million, 792,000 minutes that the average man would live. Should we do it? Let's do it. How many seconds is that? So how many seconds in a minute? Times 60. Okay. So we take our number and we multiply this number now by 60. Yes. What is it? Okay. We got four zeros on the end. One, one, two, three, four. Then we've got a two, five, seven, a two, five, seven. And then we end off with a 0, 2, 2, 0, 2, 2. Okay, what's that going to give me? Let's have a look at that. Holy cow, that is a huge, huge number. All right, 2 billion, 207 million, 520,000 seconds is how, off, how long the average man would live. So 70 years is the same thing as 25,550 days. The same thing as 613,200 hours is the same thing as 3,679,000, no, what? 36,792,000 minutes. And then it's the same as 2,207,520,000 seconds. Can you see how we've taken years and we've done all those conversions? You've got to know how to convert time. So just in summing up, in this section then, folk, we've covered the following. We've looked at various ways of expressing time. Remember, we said we can have an AM, a PM, or we can put it in a 24-hour clock. And then we've also looked at different time conversions. Trust you've enjoyed this section. Remember, it's important. It can come up in any of your topics. Have a great one. Cheers.